Greetings everyone, welcome to this new build guide. We are going to take a look at my custom crit. Yes, another custom crit. And we're keeping to the fire theme in this one also. But we're going to do use a, a little bit different now. We have changed to bows. And we're using a custom crit bow. That is uh, utilizing rain of arrows to trigger even more volatile deads. Volatile dead is a very popular skill. So most people are using it on... Uh, Witch tree, but I saw some people I were recommending it highly on the assassin ones. So I wanted to try it out, and because it's assassin, we get extreme movement speed and extreme critical strike chance. So we can run every map mod right now in the game. So we don't need to um, respec or uh, re-roll any of the maps or anything like that. And we have 8,000 effective health pool. And if you choose to use Soul Tether, we also have <laughs> Slayer Leech, which means that uh, it doesn't remove on full life your leech. So that is extreme defense, extreme clear speed, and just killing potential. If you want to clear maps in the highest speed you possibly can, this is the build for you. And as you can see here, we have T16 maps running in the background while I'm talking. And you can just see a little bit of a showcase what to expect from this build. So without further ado, let's get into the build. So here we have the gear and we're going to talk first about the main item which is going to be our cost on crit bow. Because you can roll cost on critical strike here on your bow directly. That means we have ultimately a 7 link here. Uh, and you can get some insane stats. So you want, of course, plus two uh, level of socket gems. That means that every gem here in is gonna be a plus one. Then we also can craft plus two level of socket support gems. That means every support gem, which is gonna be highly effective. If I can find it. If you have empower level four, if you can afford one of those, that means it's gonna boost that one's level and that one is in turn is going to boost everything else plus the already boost it got from the bow so it's going to be pretty insane and some increased attack speed i went with on top of that because uh, we want to shoot our rain of arrows faster that means we're going to proc more volatile balls and um, a second item that has been highly featured in this league i think and so undervalued uh, in previous it's going to be Asinine Chant. You can get this one. I can't remember the... You can search it up on the um, POE Wiki if you want to look it up. But uh, how to make this because you can make it through a prophecy. And it's so good because it has to work and trigger a succulent spell when you use you attack with a bow. So we're attacking with a bow here. So everything here get auto triggered in full speed. That means we desecrate, we create corpses, we are uh, with spell cascade of course because we want more corpses and volatile dead that means if i'm start shooting here i don't even need to have any enemies around it's going to generate so it's great for bosses because we're going to generate tons of balls that's just searching to, on top of the boss and then when it's activating it's just gonna smack into it and do massive damage already from the start another kind of a luxury item I bought because this one is super cheap this one of course is a six link but these are there's plenty of people crafting these so they have gone down in price but this one is kind of a luxury item it's about seven exalted when I bought it I don't know what it is now but what it does is again it triggers suck the bow skill when you attack with a bow and we're attacking with a bow so everything in here so you can see here my mirage archer go here and it distract it also shoots things and it creates frenzy charges for me also because when i'm walking around i'm gonna generate frenzy chargers and because of that and of course i'm lazy i use a portal gem here um I, I would not use this one i'm gonna discuss that in the gem section uh, most of you probably want to use something else there then of course because we don't need anything more we use a combs heart if you can you can buy plus to uh, all maximum resistance that is obviously best uh, soul tether is uh, extremely good for this build also because yeah we have so much um, effective health pool that means we're gonna continue 
to uh, leech even if we're not hitting anything. That is great on bosses when you are just want to move around a lot and not hit, hitting constantly and if you go on low life it still brings you up again. But you can obviously re uh, replace it with a good uh, Stygian Vice which I had in the beginning and uh, it's I don't know which one is better, but uh, Soul Tether here can have the um, implicit, if you uh, corrupt it, increase maximum life. They're not super expensive, you can have, uh, definitely, it's an affordable items. If you can afford the rest, you can definitely afford one of these. Um, for our ring here, we used uh, Synthesis Ring and we want the two mods in the bottom there. We increased fire damage while affected by Herald of Ash, it's extremely strong because Herald of Ash is going to be one of our main buffs and Herald of Ash has increased buff effect <laughs> two really good stats and you can put quality on it uh, to buff them up even more I have not divined this one to anything else uh, anything, any high value so you can definitely do that our other ring is just going to be our um, basic flammability on hit ring uh, it's gonna help us curse without setting up a blasphemy and because we don't have the mana for setting up a blasphemy So you can definitely get a flammability on hit and it's pretty cheap to buy these also Obviously if you want an exact copy of this it's not ideal uh, Shock nearby enemies is very good on this one also because well shock give you an uh, automatic 20% damage boost Yeah straight up because uh, any shock effects that happens through this rings or this crafts and if it not, doesn't specify anything that gives you 20% uh, for amulet also uh, non shining skills also good because we're using inspiration we're lowering the cost so basically we can spam this all day with this one and we are never gonna lose any mana that way otherwise we just want some stats of course on our um, because uh, Combs is going to be quite heavy on the strength requirements. We kind of want a lot of strength here. And of course, filling up our resist resistances and stuff like that. And let's move on to the gloves. The gloves are nothing special because I am want to get as close as I can. I think I'm at 99 accuracy, which is good enough, I guess. And together with precision, of course, it's going to help. But you want a max roll accuracy roll on your gloves or somewhere else on this build. I think you can get it on um, the amulet also. And if you're not using this one, which is obviously a super luxury item, uh, you can use a rare quiver also, also accuracy. But here you can roll some life, some uh, resistances and accuracy. You can buy these pretty cheap. And finally for our uh, boots, we're using, as always, Tailwind Boots with movement speed and some life I crafted on there. I see that I should have crafted even more life on there. And obviously the best um, enchant's gonna be Damage Penetrate. I, I did not get the best roll here. But these are good enough uh, for the build and that was basically my gear. Many of these pieces are interchangeable. Um, this one, Quiver Interchangeable. Belt definitely interchangeable if you're starving on any of the stats we need, so like resistance or anything. Otherwise, you will need to be very well tuned with every gear piece. So this is not, as you can see here, my uh, resistances are just over the limit. So let's go to the next. For my flasks, I have these ones right here. It's gonna be a Seeding Divine Flask of Staunching. Of course, we want the bleed immunity and we want instant recovery. Uh, I can't even remember if I'm using this anytime. <laughs> I mean, uh, if I see my life go down, usually all the ex insane leech we have is just gonna bring us up instantly anyway. And Follow Faith is a very good option for all these builds. Um, it's just insane. It applies 10% increased damage taken to enemies, critical strikes, it's critical strike, which is gonna affect our rain of arrow, concentrated ground, we are increased damage. I mean, it's a godsend bottle, but it's extremely expensive. So you can replace this one with another one if you want to. Then we, I always run one curse immunity, and it's gonna be on our diamond flask because we are a crit build. 
and we want to reach that 100% crit chance with a rain of arrows so we can just roll out the new volatile dead and also be immune to all reflective damage. Um, Cinder Swallow Urn is uh, also one of these uh, that is extremely strong and not very expensive. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive to get one with increased critical strike chance during flask effect. Uh, but not that. I mean, it's completely affordable to most people. And what it does is it gives us onslaught, first of all, extra movement speed, uh, attack speed and stuff like that. But it also gives us recover 3% life when you kill an enemy during flask effect. And you can see all the mods under there. They can roll from 1 to 3. And uh, I would start aiming for free on life. And if you can, can get to 2 or above, on energy shield we don't need the mana so it's ex as soon as you have this one up you're gonna see your life just popping even if you get hit your life is just gonna get instantly um, popped up topped up to the uh, maximum anyway so it doesn't matter and we have an ample quicksilver flask of adrenaline if you want something else then increase movement speed there I have um, then I would recommend either a freeze immunity or um, mm, I don't know freeze immunity is probably the um, most important but I don't seem to have any problems with that I, I the boss is always around so if, if I get frozen they take care of the enemies for me even though I can't move so just before opening a strong box just shoot out a few of these and then you're gonna be fine either way so those were my flask and the recommendations for those. For the jewels, we are gonna use Intuitive Leap because it let us um, take these four uh, major nodes without pathing to them because otherwise we would never take them. And it's just a small, small area. It's just perfect for this. Uh, and these are really good and strong nodes. So I highly recommend to buy this one. It's like five chaos or something like that. I don't know. But if you want to corrupt the blood version, then it's gonna cost you like five exalts or something like that. Obviously, it's uh, I had the currency and I just went for the luxury version of this. Uh, we have also a Watcher's Eye, and there's a few uh, mods you can you can have on this. But I went with Precision for the attack speed, so I can get Rain of Arrow because we use that, and Anger of course because we use Anger because we're fire built here. And there's some other ones which give uh, crit multipliers. There's a bunch. Just search up on uh, right in into the search engine on your trade site uh, on Anger. And then it comes up exactly which mods goes to Anger. Then you just click and then you do um, a search for each individual mod. See how much it's going to cost you. Um, then a really important one is Glorious Vanity. I love this jewel because it converts our mind over matter. So if I take this one away, it's mind over matter. And this one is just gonna be uh, some generic one here. But now when I put this one in, it's gonna gain 20% of maximum life as extra maximum energy shield. And this one is 0.2% of fire damage leashes life. We are fire damage and we're gonna leech all. That means we all our leeching needs are taken care of right here. And this is huge right here. It gives us over 1000 extra energy shield. Uh, highly recommend to go for one of these. Uh, they're gonna be hard to roll. Uh, it's, you're gonna need the Doriani, a uh, name of the Doriani it say, says over there. If someone wants to buy this one from me after this video, uh, just contact me and give me an offer because it's gonna not always gives the fire leash here. It's cut kind of hard or I might have just gone unlucky with the rolls so I bought up like 50 of these and then just put them in one by one and until I got the one and then I sold them back to the market all the other ones that I did not need so I highly recommend to get the fire leech here because that means you don't need any fire leech on the rest of the gear you can get it on amulet I know also you can get it on rings I believe um, yeah but it's easiest this way. Um, other jewels we are gonna use is gonna be our normal ones. All we want here is the maximum life. 
Uh, I guess you can go for a maximum energy shield also, but a maximum life is definitely more important. Area damage, some crit, and we can just uh, check out here. Crit multiplier is obviously the best, uh, and any resistance you might be lacking. Fire damage is also good. And what else do we have here? I was lacking dexterity, so I put in one extra here. And again, maximum life crit multiplier. Crit multiplier is probably gonna be the most damage boost. And then we all, all have here, if uh, if I was going more with the offensive option, then I would have a Stygian Vice with uh, one Abyss Jewel in there. And we would have uh, fire spells. Uh, fire damage spells while wielding two-handed weapon, which this one is, is a two-handed weapon. And facing maybe something of that manner. If uh, we were not running this one, blind enemies when hit with attacks, then we would probably run blind enemies on hit on this one because it's an extremely strong modifier. So there we have the jewels and let's go to the next. For our skill gems, we're gonna use the Reign of Arrow together with Volatile Dead. And because we have cast and crit on the bow already, that means when we are casting Reign of Arrow, it's gonna crit and Volatile Dead is gonna shoot out. I choose to go with Spell Cascade because it's gonna generate more of these Volatile Dead. You can also use an Awakened version if you really wanna go high. And I used Awakened Fire Penetration because it's extremely cheap. And uh, in, together with Empower, we can get it to insane levels here. So it's extremely good combo here. Otherwise, um, I guess you can go with the uh, critical strike chance if you're a little bit low on that and you don't want to die from uh, reflective or something like that. Uh, inspiration is also extremely important to have because <laughs> reduced mana cost and this inspiration you're gonna shoot all day here and it's always gonna be up on five because you're gonna not reach the points. Uh, let's see if I actually reach the point where these stacks go away. I mean, you can see how many times I can actually shoot there. No, did not go away. So, uh, because after a while it's gonna 1360 mana, you, this is gonna start ticking away and then we're gonna need to reapply. But that's not a problem at all. And power is extremely strong here because of uh, level to socket the gems and level to socket the support gems here. We have three extra levels right there. That means, yeah this in power is just gonna be supercharged and it's gonna supercharge everything else on this bow. For our uh, Ascendancy Shant, which is gonna be auto triggered here, it's, we're gonna use Desecrate uh, together with Spell Cascade. Again, we're gonna shoot out much more corpses we can use for our Volatile Dead. And again, Volatile Dead again with Spell Cascade, same effect there. Combustion is gonna debuff uh, to uh, minus 20 to fire resistance for both this skills and the ones on our main link that means it's gonna be massive damage boost to have combustion you can also run combustion on um, in this link right here and have it out of triggered and uh, use some damaging support other damaging support here because honestly we're just using it to uh, debuff the enemy but as your choice um, so for our quiver, we're gonna use Frenzy to generate Frenzy charges. We're gonna use Mirror, mirror arrow, arrow, Mirror Arrow to distract our enemies and it's also gonna shoot um, our enemies. We can use Culling Strike or Combustion like we ha have here because then it's, it's your choice. But I use Portal instead because I ran out of gem slots. Uh, Obviously, if you're running uh, portal scrolls, which is probably the better thing to do, or you switch over weapons, then you can just switch out this one for a normal one, uh, for a calling strike or combustion. For other links, we're gonna use, of course, Herald Lash, which synergizes very well with Circle of Agony. And uh, we're also gonna use Enlighten Level 4. Enlightened level 4 is gonna make it possible for us to have at least a little bit mana. As you can see here if I take it out. I wonder if I can actually do this. I can probably do it now anyway with uh, Ring and Shaman. non shannon skills have 9 and Inspiration. You can probably do this without Enlightened or definitely with Enlightened 3 at least. 
Uh, but it's nice to have a little bit of buffer. Anger is uh, very effective, it's probably the highest uh, damage boost, especially if the, you have the Watcher's Eye uh, Jewel, which is uh, giving you the bonus extra from that. And Precision is a must, it's a very inexpensive kind of uh, aura, and it's gonna give you massive boost, especially in the accuracy, because we are not stacking accuracy on much here. So basically the gloves are our only accuracy gathering node here and for our boots we have flame dash to get through those pesky gates and uh, over ledges and stuff like that uh, and we also use arc insert so when we use this one two times that means we're gonna have an arc insert you can also use uh, instead of, of arc insert because it's not up very often for me because I always forget to use it uh, instead, I would use um, uh, Val uh, Righteous Fire to just have one big burst of damage on bosses. Uh, cost one damage taken together with Steel Skin. You want to make sure that uh, <laughs> you do have Flame Dash then on level 21. Otherwise, then your Flame Dash is probably gonna be triggered. I don't know if that is gonna. Yeah, it's probably going to be the case. So make sure that you have nothing else that you do not want triggered in this uh, setup then. So those were the skills that I have actually chosen. I don't think I will change anything here. I will just keep it exactly. This is fine tuned and maximized for maximum defense and DPS. And I've tried so many iterations of this and this is definitely the way to go. For our passive tree, we are going to have a uh, just pick up the generic life nodes, uh, as much crit and crit multiplier we can get, especially for our uh, reign of arrow, which is an attack, so if it says the spells, it's not as important. Obviously, we I think we're picking up a few of those if they come in our way. Power charges, also very good, um, max life, and we also have down to face acrobatics. Face acrobatics is very important because it gives you a lot of survivability. This is, this is still with face acrobatics, so we get 30% uh, less energy shield. So if you want more energy shield and more there that way, then of course you can uh, take those. And Intunity Leap helps us take these right down here without pathing to them. Otherwise, we pick up some extra energy shield and life here. All the jewel nodes that are not that far away, we obviously pick up because those are going to be filled up with some key um, jewels that we are going to need for this make it work. And these two, obviously, you can maybe if you have less points, I would path out of these nodes right here and just keep uh, have one, two, three, four, five less points here, and then you can utilize them. On other places or if you have not gotten up to uh, well I guess you would be level 90 then so if you're lower then I would path out of these ones or some life notes if you want if you're very close to my level and this one obviously you know this from the <laughs> jewel section really important otherwise we just path down here to get some extra life some extra spell damage, uh, elemental resistance is very nice because we're starving on that. Same thing here, we have extra notes. And yeah, I think that is basically the gist of it. For our synthesis, we are gonna use opportunistic and it's gonna give us increased movement speed. And of course, if you have a lot of crit, which we are gonna get for unstable infusion and deadly infusion, some uh, power charges and uh, critical strike chance while at maximum power charges, 2% extra there. And we're stacking uh, power charges on our tree already, so these are gonna be extremely important. But even more important, if you reach 100% critical strike chance, uh, that means you can do all reflective maps. So if you uh, want to reach that, then that would be really good. Then you don't even need to look at your map mods and then you can just roll all your maps at one time and then just throw them into your map device and just forget about them. Uh, more damage while the most rare enemies, of course, is some damage boost here. Uh, I highly recommend to go with exactly these because Mistwalker on top of this is going to give us 20% chance to dodge spell, attack and attack hits and 40% increased movement speed. You can see our movement speed, movement speed, movement speed. 
and also when you have the elusive buff up it's gonna tick down obviously it's gonna be worse worse and then it's gonna go away but we're gonna reapply it instantly anyway so it's basically always gonna be up and while it's up we are always gonna have increased 20% uh, increased attack and cost speed while you have elusive and reduce damage taken also so all of this is gonna be extremely strong to have and um, yeah I highly recommend to just go with these for our Pathions, we are just gonna have Soul of Lunaris here, and we are gonna have that because we have um, reduced <laughs> damage taken for nearby enemies up to 8%, increased movement speed because obviously movement speed is very nice, and we're gonna have chance to dodge attack spells, avoid projectiles if you have chained, and yeah, that means you're not gonna be off screen by any chains that get running through you, and always i go with always the minor god here soul of shakari immune to poison and uh, because we have max rest the only one that we don't have maxed out is chaos so we reduce chaos damage taken is always a nice one and forget about poison also so these are my pathions for our bandits we are gonna use either a lira which gives us uh, elemental resistance which is highly needed crit multiplier and uh, some nice mana region so we don't need to we can completely forget about mana region and we can uh, have some extra damage and extra resistance so extremely good there all three stats is highly needed for this build but if you don't want that and you want to rely more on your gear then you can take two passive points but i highly recommend to go with a lira and just be more free with uh, picking a uh, other gear pieces and stuff like that. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you can create your own custom crit volatile dead character from this build guide. And if you have any questions, like always, write me a comment below and put a like on this video and subscribe for content just like this. Thank you everyone and have an awesome day.